Appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the Minnesota Vikings. And hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you take a look at our matchup here. You've got to believe that this is a game that might be won in the trenches. Oh, without question. This is big person on big person. Big unit against big unit. Meet on me. Oh, you got it all. Pick your cliche. But we know this. The ground's going to shake. Things are going to rumble. And they're going to have an impact on today's game. Here's Kai Forbath now to get us started. Charles and I have been looking forward to this one all week. This is taken at the three. Uses this stiff arm. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Time to find out what the Indianapolis Colts can do on offense. As you peer back to 2017, Jacoby Brissett became the guy at the quarterback position because of the health issues with Andrew Luck. Everyone in this franchise is wondering, what is Andrew Luck's future? And I guess you're probably wondering that as well. I think we all are, and if we could ever get involved with his doctors. But, of course, they've all taken the Hippocratic Oath, right? And they're going to make sure they're not going to tell us anything. They don't tell the patient first. If his shoulder is right and he can get back to being Andrew Luck, this team's transformed immediately. You know, you've got some playmakers. You've got some guys that, you know, that, that can play. And the confidence level goes sky high, especially in their AFC South division. You know, they can play with people. But without Andrew Luck, is Jacoby Brissett going to continue to develop where you feel like he's a true starting quarterback in the league? He had sacked 52 times last year. So obviously the offensive line needs some attention as well. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series you have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. All right, I've got to be careful here. All right, he's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard. But that's not slowing down his speed as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you don't know what I'm on the plus side of. <laughs> All I know is that run right there, let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely. Still got a lot of life left in those legs. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a play fake here on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. Want me to jump in on your partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. So here we go, first and ten now. A shotgun snap for Luck. And Aiken with it over the middle. And they've got it inside the ten at the eight. Twelve more yards there and another first down. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate. Got the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, that would be pinpoint here. As I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. And here we go on first and goal. And Luck hands this one off to Gore. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. 
And this offense sometimes is predicated on the ageless wonder, Frank Gore. And he wants to be a guy with limitless carries. Frank Gore gets better and better with each carry, really batters defenses with his inside running. Second and goal from the seven. Another try on second down for Gore. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. Holding offense. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Second and goal. Following the penalty, it's Gore. And he's got this one down to the 10. He picks up seven yards there, but they're still faced with a difficult third and goal here. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, yeah, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Can this defense get the stop on the opening drive? Here's third and goal. From the gun, here's Love. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3 0. So they get the ball first here in front of the home crowd under the lights, and they get three points out of it. And there's something about a night game, isn't there? A little extra snap, a little extra crisp in the air. What a terrific way to get things started. A little extra excitement, a little extra dazzle for the home crowd. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee and he'll take over at the 25. As the Minnesota Vikings come out onto the field, we get a peek at Case Keenum. What a season it was for Case. Everyone knows the story, but 22 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, the way he went about his business and the success he had. What can you say about him, Charles? All you say is this is a young guy that didn't just bide his time, but was ready to step in when the opportunity presented itself and show his best side. And he did it this year. I'm still stunned he didn't go to the Pro Bowl. But I think a lot of that was just simple, simply name recognition. But the year he had carried Minnesota all the way to the NFC Championship game and was good enough for people to talk about a possible MVP at some point during the season. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. And incomplete, an excellent play downfield. Should have been picked off, really. But second down instead. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. When I see Latavius Murray with the ball in his hands, I think that he's a dangerous player. He has good speed, good presence to run inside, nice tunnels, and good vision that once he gets past the first line of defense, he can make a guy miss and turn it into a bigger game. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. 
Every year I go to the combine, I marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun snap for Keenum. They find some open field here. And he slides to avoid the hit. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. play the clock hits triple zeros and time is up on the first quarter three nothing is our score ea sports nfl sunday returns following this the nfl on ea sports is fueled by gatorade the sports fuel company Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. And they've got it here with a first down. here on first down and complete right side the tight end Rudolph and he is out of bounds just a yard or two shy of the 30 and a nice gain of 21 yards his position and he's listed as a tight end but he certainly doesn't run like one and that's what we're seeing more and more coming into the league those guys who can run make plays after the catch and gain that additional yardage and using that speed there to turn it into a pretty nice little gain yards shy of the red zone here at the 22 yard line give him nine there on the first down completion that was a nicely run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target On second down, Cook. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Handoff comes to Cook. 
And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. are able to strike for six. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. So that drive in total eight plays. And it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's going to get taken down inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line. Anytime you feel the kickoff inside your own end zone, you've got to be decisive about whether you're bringing it out or not. Sometimes that indecision can really cost you. That may have been what happened on that play. Well, before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on yeah. the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think, you would agree of coach of the year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. Second down is locked. Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. And they're going to get this one up past the 25. A good pick up there on 20 yards. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. In just two minutes' time, don't forget, we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, it's long. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Linval Joseph. 
never giving up. He's able to keep working and get him for a loss of 12. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Here's Luck now on second down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Doyle. And now the Vikings are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. And they'll get him down here at the 23. And another timeout called by the Vikings now. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Colts send out their punter. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. Sherrill's to return it. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted around the league for by quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Le'Veon Bell, Deion Lewis, some pass catchers, Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins. And about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. Let's it fly for... Tra Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 40. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. Well, the Indianapolis Colts finished 3-13 in 2017 as their offense comes back out onto the field. Yeah, you mentioned earlier the offensive line may be needing some help. Look at all the times that Jacoby Brissett was sacked. I think he said it 52 times. They need maybe some more assistance, though, than just the O-line. Yeah, I would agree with that. The defense was 30th overall. So you've got to find some guys who can stop a few people as well. And one GM in the league has told me consistently over time, Davis... It's always going to be a big man's game. They need some big people to fill those roles and start to help this team out. You, you mean literally big people. I'm talking big people, offensive, defensive linemen, to help them transform. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime.
And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Second down, here's Locke. And a reception made by Dante Moncrief. And the ball is knocked out, and the Vikings pick up the football. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Vikings coming out here again to take over on offense. And this is a crew, obviously, that was so close, Charles, to becoming the first ever team to play a Super Bowl in their own stadium. So disappointment in that last game against Philly. But overall, I think they've got to be pretty pleased with the season. They have to be because they put it all together. Won the NFC North. How about that win over the Saints in the divisional round? I mean, I don't know that they'll ever top that in terms of getting something done late in the game, especially with what was on the line. They do get Dalvin Cook back at running back next year. I think they'd still like to have a little more speed at wide receiver. But all in all, this team comes back pretty well intact and will be a force for a while. Yeah, that defense is pretty sad. Very much so. <laughs> I mean, they try and move the ball against their front and then try and throw it against Xavier Rhodes. Good luck to you. 23 yards on the play. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Keenum. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jabal Sheard from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And they weren't in zone coverage, they were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. So on now is Kai Forbath. If you're wondering, he's hit from as far as 57. 64 was Matt Prater's record. This would top that by a yard. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. So we reach intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both the Colts and the Vikings haven't had a reliable run game so far. The push-up front has not been there, and you have to give credit to both defenses on that front. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, Joseph's going to take down the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. All right, 
ahead, Larry. Thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. Oh, good move. Oh, now he bowls him over. And look out. I think he's going to go. He's at the 40, the 20, 10. Touchdown, Vikings. Yeah, people still trying to get back to their seats from the concession stand here at the start of the third quarter, and boom, we got points on the board. And you just identified why the bulk of stadiums have increased presence in the concession areas, right? TVs, loudspeakers, so people can still follow the game. And right now, they're bummed out that they missed that big return to start this half. Now four bath for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that one officially goes down to the books as a return for a touchdown of the kickoff of 103 yards. So let's try this again after the kick return TD. Here's yet another kickoff. This is taken at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But well, this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now on second down, this is Gore. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, 
you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. But then he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like his focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Luck gives to his running back, Gore. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. handoff it's Gore and he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47 a six yard pickup on the ground that time and that'll make it third and four coming up getting out a ton of success here so far but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one yeah even on that one there was a little bit of a hole but it closed there quickly at the end the Colts on third down just one for three thus far this is third and four Out of the gun, Luck. But he finds his man, Kamar Aiken. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone and find the first down, and that's what he just did. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a carry from back. Even with the good footwork, he'll be stopped just inside the 35-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. to the ground this time with Gore and nothing doing he's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go no gain on that run and while the team is down there's still time to come back and win the football game if I'm the offensive coordinator though I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more On third down, they'll run with Gore. And not much running room. Down to the 32. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave them with some options here on fourth and inches. here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's the Colts, so they've got the football, but they've got work to do trailing here as we begin the fourth quarter.
and we'll begin it with a field goal try here. He was true on his first, this a tough one, from 49 yards away. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14-6 to now. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. now to kick this one away and off it goes to return here comes Marcus Sherrills and there he goes again the 40 past the 20 10 touchdown Vikings Again, help me, partner. I'm, yeah, I get fired up. Two kickoff returns for touchdowns in the same game. This is fun to watch. Yeah, we call a lot of games in a lot of different places. Sometimes it seems like we do it simultaneously, but we rarely get to see this. Forbath to add the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21 to 6. A spectacular return of 96 yards. Great blocking in front of him on special teams as well as he takes it to the end zone. So now the other return teams out there as they'll try to duplicate what they just saw. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And it's tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. First and ten, lock. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Throwing his lock. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Doyle. Lock fighting his emerging tight end, Doyle, for a cold first. 
fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. down love over the middle and it's incomplete he was looking for Dante Moncrief that time that'll bring up second down one thing I have learned receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline but do that over the middle to them and not only are the DB's gonna throw a little verbal trash their way when they get back to the huddle they have a few words to say to their QB aren't they yeah hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw luckily fell incomplete on second and ten, Locke. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Linval Joseph in there to get him for his second sack of the night. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. Here's Luck. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Sharif Floyd in there to drop him, and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. Well, they went with a nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this is going to be incomplete. Chuck Pagano decides to go. It doesn't work out. And now possession's going to go over with a football at the 20-yard line. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously, twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not over. As you said, two-score game still. And now out comes Minnesota. And the last go-around for them, they tried that really, really long field goal, couldn't connect. And in retrospect, I think a lot of people would say, well, why would you try one that long? You hurt yourself in field position. The ball comes out, you know, there. That only helps the other team. But I look at it as maybe it was a double shot of confidence. Confident the kicker could make it. And even if he missed, confident in their defense that they could hold him. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives them a first and goal. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. They'll run with Cook. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a second and goal now as they look to add a few more points here onto their total. Three. 
Second down, goal to go from the six. Now a run with Cook, and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. And we know they won't get their names in the stat sheet, but the offensive line has to get all the credit for that touchdown run. Tremendous job of blocking, paving the way for the six points. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. He's got it, and the lead swells. It's 28 to 6. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Forbath out to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And the Colts coming out now. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Luck on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Second and ten, luck again. Drops it underneath to Gore. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll bring up a third and one. Here's Luck. And he's got Moncrief. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. Luck connecting with Moncrief for the Indianapolis first. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Now a first down throw, Luck. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. To the air again. Lock. It's complete. It's Gore. And he'll get it down here to the 43. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Throwing again is Lock. And the catch made by Hilton. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Luck throwing again. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. The Colts on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and eight. From the gun, here's Luck. Room here to run. He's got the first down here inside the 30. 
And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as he'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Shotgun snap for Love. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll bring up a second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now it's locked. Oh, he's got some breathing room. He's to the 10, and he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. And with just inside of 10 seconds to go, they'll burn their final timeout. Nine seconds left. And hey, welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Five yards to go for the offense. First down and goal from that five-yard line. They'll try the air now with Locke. This is caught. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. Well, Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With